Well, it's that time of year again, folks. Time to face my nemesis that is bluebells. We're not quite at peak season yet. I think there's another, maybe another week, maybe two weeks to go. But I thought I'd come out and see if I could get my eye in because I really do struggle. With no mist, the trees, whilst they're beautifully uniform, have no um, branches coming off them that are relatively low down and in bloom. So they're lovely vibrant beach green that you get. So I'm just having a wander around. I've bought the 50 mil with me because somebody said, try woodland with 50 mil, it'll change your perspective. Okay. So what have I done? I've gone for the 70 to 200. Sorry, I keep looking to my right because I'm on a pathway. I just want to make sure I'm not going to interrupt people walking. I've picked out a small composition which I think I quite like. There is a clump of bluebells and a rock stone to the left. There's a tree stump coming in from the right. The clump of bluebells is surrounded by brown leaves. And then in the background, we have a mixture of anemones and, oh, I said it, anemones and bluebells and tree, stu tree trunks. Now, I haven't included any of the sky. I'm shooting out at 200 mil. And I just keep tweaking out. And I haven't got my brace on, and it actually hurts quite a lot. We've got tree stumps going off, not tree stumps, tree trunks going off into the background. And there's patches of light in the background. There's a massive bank of cloud which is diffusing the sunlight, which is fab because that reduces the harshness, but it's not letting any rays through. But I think, think I quite like that one. We're at F6.3, a tenth of a second. I have got the polarizer on and it is just making the slightest difference to the color of the bark. It goes lighter to darker. Two second timer on the camera, just to eliminate any possibility of shade. Yeah, I think I quite like that. It's not bad for a start. It's not what I wanted, but maybe the woods aren't right. Maybe I haven't got the total blanket that you see at places such as Mitchell Diva. But we're going to make the best of it. I'm out in nature. The bird song is glorious. What's not to like? I thought I'd show you what I've been concentrating on for about 20 minutes now. The sun has just broken through the bank of cloud, so it's shedding some light on the two little clumps that I've picked out. Let me turn you around. Now, it's not going to be the easiest of things to show you because we've now got the light coming in, but let's have a look. So the first clump I've concentrated on is this one. I've done a portrait orientation and a landscape orientation. And because I'm shooting on the 70 to 200, I've managed to blur most of this out. So that gives a kind of dreamy look. And these, just getting a little bit of light on the stems, that works quite nicely. And then I spotted these. I'm being very careful to tread where there aren't any bluebells. This little clump here with this beautiful bark that's just glowing green in the morning light. And again, shooting the 70 to 200, I've managed to blur out the background. Not completely, you can still tell what it is. And I've left a little bit of this area in. I'll probably cut it off about here. And I think that works okay. It's not the image I wanted, but as I say, I'm not sure these woods are actually... Oops, let's go back over here. The right type of woods for that beautiful 
mass carpet of bluebells. And as I say, we aren't in peak season yet. Well, I may not be getting the fog or the mist, and I might not be getting the dappled light, and I might not have the carpet of bluebells <laughs> that I really wanted, but I think I'm actually getting some images that I'm quite pleased with. And I've walked a hundred yards from where I was just now, and I've got one, two, three, four compositions. And I've literally just stood here and gone there are images here i know there are images here and i'm going to stop sulking because i haven't got the conditions that i actually wanted and i'm going to make the most of what i've got so this first image over here i have a tree stump just shooting up between a mass of bluebells and i've actually done a focus stack on that one so that i've got the tree stump sharp and the bluebells at the base of it sharp i'm shooting at I think, so yeah, I'm still at f6.3 and I'm at a third of, thir one thirteenth of a second. I'm using the polarizer to really make the greens punch. Again, as I say, I'm shooting at f6.3, so I'm blurring out the background quite nicely. And that polarizer is also making the purples and the blues of the bluebells punch out. And then I've got this tree here, and at the base of it, there are, or there is a clump of bluebells at staggered heights. So I focused on those, that's thrown the background out and it's turned it into a proper carpet of purple. And it leads back to a couple of other tree trunks. Then I went slightly higher and I've got two tree trunks at the back. I think I prefer the, the landscape orientation on that one rather than the portrait. And I was hoping for the light to come in so that it would just put a little bit of light on those bluebells, but it hasn't. It's stubbornly refusing to come out from behind the clouds but hey you can't have it all that's probably the weakest of the images not that any of them are award winners but i'm quite happy with them and then i'm not sure if you'll be able to see oh let's try and walk forward a little bit without trampling on any bluebells just here we have a what looks like an old tree root and i focused on that that's then thrown the background out and we've got Anem anemones, <laughs> anemones round it, and a couple of bluebells, but then we've got a mass of bluebells going out from the back. So I'm quite pleased with that lot. And that's just, oh, from staying in one position and looking, picking the camera up, moving around, trying different positions, different points of view, and being a stubborn sod and deciding I'm not giving up. Now, I've just been talking to that dog owner and he said, if I go down here and go around to the left, I might find some more bluebells. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here I'm gonna try and show you the effect that the polarizer has. I haven't quite figured out how to video record on this Nikon, so it might look a bit odd. That is with the polarizer fully on. And as I turn it round, you can just see the green starting to get a bit wishy-washy and pale and then you bring it back and it darkens it down. It really makes them punch. I'm hoping you can see the difference there. So yes, a polarizer is worth its weight in gold when you're in the woodlands. Well, that dog walker was right. And I recognise this bit because this is where I came last year. 
So the question is, can I make any different compositions? Last year there were white bells here. I can actually see a little white bell down there, but I'm not going to shoot the white bells this year. What's caught my eye here, and I'm not convinced you're going to see it, there's a very spindly tree that curves up and sort of over, raggedy branches at the top, and a little bunch of greenery about two foot up from the ground. It's really difficult to get a composition on that, so I've ended up going in really tight, shooting at f3.2, I believe. Oh, f3.5 to really isolate it from the background because it's green and the tree behind it is green I needed to isolate as much as I could that spindly little thing and then there's a mass of bluebells underneath it again I'm going to focus stack I'm making life difficult for myself today because I wanted the tree in focus and the bluebells behind but I also wanted the bluebells at the front of the tree or the it's not really a tree it's a it's a stick <laughs> I wanted those in focus, so I've done two images there. And as I say, f3.5 and 180th of a second with the polarizer on. And I think that works. This is actually turning out to be quite a productive morning. And I wasn't expecting it. This was literally a recce to come out and see how many bluebells were out. And other than this area, which I've been to before, what other areas there were that I could shoot. So yes, adapt and overcome. As the seals say, adapt and overcome. I've been wandering around this little patch just looking for something that grabs my eye. <laughs> I think I found it. We're starting to get a little bit of light come through the cloud is beginning to separate up there a little bit and it's just allowing small rays to come through if i just tilt you around here what i spotted was this branch i'm hoping you can see that lying on the floor it's a curve and it's got an upright and it's almost equilaterally placed between the two trees on either side and for a few minutes we got Oh, excuse me. For a few minutes, we got some beautiful light on it. Again, I've focus stacked, and this time I've done three images. The others that I've done have been two, because I wanted all the bluebells this side of it in focus. Then I wanted the stump in focus, or the, the fallen branch in focus, and then I wanted it to fall off behind. And we've got a mass of bluebells going out behind it. Oh, this really is making me slow down. I keep looking at things, I'm still pointing the camera at stuff and framing up what I think is composition and tweaking it and tweaking it a bit more and then going, nope, that doesn't work. But it really is making me slow down. It's wonderful. That I'm very happy with. Again, still shooting at f3.5, 1 1 25th of a second, polarizer on to full effect. And it was just the light bringing out the textures and tones in that tree stump that really sets it off. I think I might actually call it a wrap here. So thank you for coming along. I will be back to the seaside at some point, but I want to take advantage and improve my skill set with woodland and specifically bluebells. Then we go into wild garlic season. So I want to improve on that. So anyway, yes, normal service will be resumed at some point and we'll be back to the coast. In the meantime, <laughs> have a great weekend. I'll catch you soon. Bye for now.